takes a lot for me to get really, really angry with them, really, but I, I'm not sure where that came from tonight, to be honest. So we have to apologise to the fans who came and we will have to put it right at the weekend. Back-to-back -back shambolic defeats for Rovers. Is this the future or is it just a blip in the road? We'll talk about it next. That's right, folks, back once again with another match review, this time looking back at the next shambolic display by Rovers. 3-1 defeat at the hands of Wigan. Now, we'll get to that in just one second. Now, if you're new to the channel, make sure you hit the old subscribe button. Keep you bang up to date with all things Blackburn Rovers related, championship related, world football related. We're going to all hear under one roof. Now, let's jump into it. Another unpleasant one for us, folks, as we try to, uh, I don't know, Try to pick apart this latest uh, disaster, and that is the 3-1 defeat against Wigan. In a game that we kind of, we, it, was, it, was, it was open, it was up for grabs in the first 30 odd minutes, but we never showed up. Rovers never showed up today. In fact, if you just, there was nothing in this game for us. Even the goal that we scored was not one of our players. It was a big fat OG that was a weak effort, um, and we were lucky to get that. And what makes things worse is that we, we get this result fresh off the back of another humiliation, uh, humiliating defeat against Preston. So this was meant to be, this was meant to be the, the chance for the team to respond and, and come back with, with something for the fans to get excited about. But today, it's probably worse than it was on Saturday. So, not good. Seven goals conceded in, in two games of football. And it doesn't look like any sort of urgency by Rovers today. Nothing, nothing good going forward. You know, it was like, for, to be honest with you, we've got one of the best players in the league. Uh, and in my eyes, probably the best player in the league. And that is Bradley Dack. And today, he, in the past two games, in fact, like three or four games, he's been, he's been like, he was he's not been there. He's been half the player he is, not getting involved in, in the stuff that he's he was known to be doing. He's not getting in the pockets, not getting in the spaces, not creating anything. It's been very, very lackluster. And also, and I don't like to throw, and I'm not one of the Mowbray out campaign, because there is a bit of a Mowbray out campaign after today's performance. But tactics-wise, Saturday was a little bit off, no striker. Today, you're playing players that, that, that it, just, it, just, it just felt so flat. It's been flat for the past two games. But anyway, let's take a look at it. So the goals from uh, Wigan were scored by Roberts in the 37th minute. Good strike in the end. Can't really complain. Second one was in the second half. Penalty. Uh, Vaughan smashed it on home after Rodwell dragged down Windass, I think. Uh, McManor and Ramon on home on the 86th minute for Wigan. Our own cons consolation was a Dan Byrne OG. Now, what makes things even more worse was the fact that Nick Powell started this game and I was worried. I thought, oh my goodness, uh, Nick Powell's on this game. Obviously, the, the, the powell Dak rivalry is still uh, alive and well. And then he got pulled up injured. And I thought, hang about, we've got a chance here. You know, with their best players coming off. And uh, nope, unfortunately, they got better. They got better without their best player. So maybe, just maybe, some of the undroppables, the Smallwoods, the Daks, the Mulgrews, maybe they're going to have to, you're going to have to drop them at some point. And if performances like this keep on going... Uh, and that, that's probably what we what he's going to have to do. If if he doesn't want the finger of blame going to him, he's got to put the fingers of the blame at the players. But anyway, let's take a look at some of the statistics here from whoscored.com. Total shots by Wigan. Here we go. Here we go. Here's a stat for you. 17 shots by Wigan. Six for Rovers. Possession. We had most of the possession. 57% compared to their 43%. But hardly any of that was going forward. I'll take a look at the old heat maps in a little bit. Uh, pass success rate. Obviously, that was pretty good for us. 74% of our passes went to the intended target. But they were all in our own half. Or the majority was, anyway. Dribbles. Uh, Wigan had 8 to our 3. Aerial tackles or battles were 1. 25 to 24 in our favour. Tackles on the ground. 11 to 8 in favour of Wigan. Uh, they also had more corners than us. 5 to 4. And we were dispossessed 7 to 4. Anyway, take a look at the starting lineups. First and foremost, our hosts. Uh, Walton, uh, uh, Naismith, Byrne, Kipre and James back four. Robert Smorsey, Evans and Byrne in midfield. Uh, uh, Nick Powell did start. And James Vaughan up top. Now let's take a look at this starting lineups for the Shambolic Rovers uh, today. They arrived between the sticks. Bell, Broadwell, Mulgrew, Nyimbi, Evans, Smallwood, Dak Armstrong, Reed and DG up top. Now here are my, that's just my player ratings, and it is not pretty reading. I don't know, I just threw a load of random numbers up. David Ryan got a six, obviously he did, uh, uh, you know, there were some question marks about the old face mask and all that kind of stuff for me. Um, but he did pull off some wonder saves to keep the scoreline just at three. Uh, Amari Bell, left back, 
Left back in the changing rooms, it should be more like three for him. Uh, Rodwell with a four, Mogra with a four. They just looked clueless today. No Lenahan for whatever reason. Now you've got a five. It's been a little bit harsh on him. I actually thought he was okay. He did go forward, but he left so many holes at the back. Uh, into the midfield. Evans got a four. Small, we've got a four. Evans, obviously one of the players of the season up until recently. But today, not there. Smallwood. Yeah, Bradley that gets a three because realistically a player of his caliber should be creating more, doing more, and you know maybe maybe due to the, the his team teammates effort not feeding him the ball in the right spots, but a three for him. Armstrong gets a four just because I'm being nice. Reed gets a five because we like Reed, and DG gets a two because he only played 45 minutes. Uh, anyway, let's take a look at the shots. Look at that. The orange is Wigan. It's like a uh, it's like a sea of orange there, all over the place. So credit must go to uh, David Raya for at least saving them. As for us, there's a cluster of shots in there. Nothing really to get excited about. And there is a big, big fat orange one, and that is the goal. Uh, more statistics for you. Uh, we had 404 passes to their 300. Um, we also had 578 touches to their 473. And on the bottom there, you can see where all the shots took place. And here is the illustrious heat map. Yep, as you can see, nothing, absolutely nothing in the Wigan area for Blackburn Rovers. So we spent very little time, in fact, we spent a lot of time in our own half. On the flip side for Wigan, they're all over the place, and that just goes to show why they won. 3-1 in the end. So, not good, not good at all. And uh, here's some of the players and some of the fans shortly after the match on Twitter. Uh, here we go with uh, Dominic Samuel. Obviously, he is out injured, and I bet he's, he's probably one of the Rovers players who can come out of this with a bit of grace because he just says, we stay positive. Yeah, nothing to get too positive about at the moment. As for ex-Rover, Kevin Gallagher said this. Every way to be critical, but keep something, keep supporting the lads. It's all about how they pick themselves up from these defeats. Something they haven't been used to in League One. That is true. As for the rest of the fans, a lot of people in full voice. Uh, Shay 115 said this. I hope to see a lot of changes for the next game. Clearly something is not working. Why not use Conway, uh, Rothwell, Downing? We need fresh players. Maybe the players that are not the first or second choice will do different. Because to be honest, how much worse can it get? Russell Prescott says this. Not sure I agree with the statement that everyone was poor tonight. Personally, I thought David Raya prevented it from being a closer to a cricket score. The only one to emerge with any credit. Indeed, Simon Woodford said this. Pathetic and embarrassing in the last two games. But let's not get carried away and overreact. Things need looking at. And I'm sure Tony Mumbo will find the answer so so let's stick together and stay behind the lads, indeed. Uh, Aaron Pilling said this. So frustrating. We seem to play much better against teams who are much higher up the league. Then it comes to Rotherham, Preston and Wigan. And we play like utter shite. And take away one point from a possible nine. Something needs to change. And fast Tom Schofield said this. Maybe I expect too much from this side after the past 12 months. Lost in the past, though. And I accept it. These past two have felt different. Love this team. But we are desperate for a spot on Saturday. It's got to happen. Scott Scott said this, Q, uh, Q tweets uh, from players um, about how we go again, etc, etc, etc. Sorry, but they have to show it. No urgency with anything tonight. Walking to get the ball when it goes out of play. Not rushing free kicks. We made it very easy for Wigan tonight. Uh, Eric Blue Monster said this, not liked or never liked November anyway. From a footballing point of view, November's wank. Bring on December. Moving on to Linz Lewis says this, I've travelled 500 miles in five days to stand in the two away ends and lose miserably to sides that not uh, that impressive. Saturday was appalling. Tonight was worse. I always try and find a positive. Today, I have none. I'll be at you with Saturday because when times are tough, they need us more. Hashtag Rovers. Chris Wire said this. So the players, don't bother saying the usual we go again because you have to actually start first. Time to show some fight because the last two games you were pathetic. Andrew Barnes said this. Nothing else to lose now. Make some changes. Drop Graham. Start Brereton or Armstrong up front. Bench. Dak for a few games. His mind isn't in it. Smallwood needs to go. I do not understand that Tony is thinking with him. Maybe we have also rushed Mulgrew back too soon. Hashtag changes. Uh, Martin Shaw said this. Yep, that was shit, but two losses isn't the end of the season. Got to stop the rot. We're looking dreadful at the moment. Uh, meanwhile, Daniel Manson says this. What a joke of a performance. Don't mind losing if we put up a good fight, but today and Saturday was pathetic. And the usual uh, Rovers 
I don't know what we can call ourselves, but the boys have been chatting. The BRFCS.com Twitter account said this. We don't often lose two in the bounce. In fairness, this is unusual. That said, the last two have been so stupendously poor that all previous reference points no longer seem valid. Rovers chat said this. Promised us a reaction, and they haven't delivered. Another poor performance. Dak has been abysmal, and we've been the same. Northern Rover. Ghastly performance from Rovers. Lucky to get away with just conceding three. We seem to have completely lost confidence. Talk of Ewood said this. I'm absolutely gutted about that performance and Saturdays. But calling for Tony Mowbray out is just silly. Just have a think. It's not often we perform like that. And when we have, we've usually reacted. Think of all the highs this man has given us before you call for his sacking. It is balmy. Just talking about that. Even mentioning it. Anyway, Rovers tweet said this. Two local derbies. Two absolutely pathetic performances. Simple as that. And over on my side of the pond, NYC Rovers said this. Clearly some major issues now. One, one in six. And three of those games conceded three plus goals. But for me, yes, it was uh, like like dental surgery, folks. You know, very painful to watch uh, an experience, and then just no, there was no, there was no urgency. Even when we had a sniff of a chance at two one, at two one, there was a glimmer of hope for us to try and get us back into this. And instantly we fell away, we melted, and and they just they just got their third again, and it was it was game over. It was game over. You know, just. Just the fact that we come into this game off the back of a spanking by Preston, a monster sort of local derby, one of the biggest local derbies for us. Obviously, the Burnley one is the, the pinnacle, but this is not far behind. Oh, the Wigan one, or oh, sorry, the Preston one, was not, it's not far behind that. To lose that as badly as we did, to come into this one, a team that we've rubbed up against for the past couple of seasons, and, and show that sort of desire... It, it is it is baffling, and I said it in my instant review. You know, where's uh, where's Lewis Travis, a youngster chomping at the bit to get in the game? Uh, some of the youngsters probably, you know, thinking we could do better than this. There there is a lack of something. Maybe there, there, there's something going on behind the scenes that we don't know about. I don't know, but uh, whatever happens, we need to bounce back and fast. But anyway, let's take a look at what else went on in the old championship this uh, match day. Um, and there was a monstrous game down at Villa Park. Ended up 10-goal thriller, five apiece. That's the one we should have been watching. Uh, meanwhile, Rotherham took on QBR yesterday. They drew 2-2. Uh, our next opponent, Sheffield Wednesday, they took on Bolton yesterday and they won 1-0. So they'll come into the, our game in a little bit confidence. Leeds also won 1-0 against Reading. Uh, Preston also picked up a point against Borough. That's, uh, that's convincing for them. West Brom beat Swansea. Stoke beat Derby. And Ipswich cannot get themselves a win. But after that, the results of the table look like this. Norwich are flying high in first spot. One point clear of Leeds. Middlesbrough, West Brom, Sheffield United and Notts Forest occupy the playoff spots. As for the drop zone is Ipswich, Bolton and Hull. They're in the relegation fodder. As for Rovers, we are now in 13th spot. From 8th to 13th in just a matter of days. As for Wigan, they're breathing down our necks now. In 15th spot next up for Rovers. It is a tasty home game against Sheffield Wednesday. If we back that up a second. Sheffield Wednesday are in 16th spot. So this is this is, uh, this is is where it all sort of comes down to. Because after this game, it does get pretty nasty. So we need to get a result uh, to get the confidence back. Get the juices flowing. And maybe just get the goal scoring. Drop flipping everybody. Get big bad boy Brereton in there. He's due a goal. This is the moment. This is the moment he's going to uh, score the goal to, to lift the hoodoo and get us refocused on possibly a top half finish. Um, but anyway, you've heard a little bit what I've had to say about the match. Now what you really want to hear is what the gaffers had to say about the match. Here he is, Tony Murray, talking about the shambolic defeat that was against Wigan. I would have to say I've just told the players it's the worst I've seen since uh, I've arrived. Um, I didn't see it coming. I don't know where that's come from. It's unacceptable. It's... Um, and we have to put it right on Saturday, but uh, it takes a lot for me to get really, really angry with them, really, but I th I'm not sure where that came from tonight, to be honest. So we have to apologise to the fans who came, and we will have to put it right at the weekend. Listen, we got bullied at the end of the day. We, we couldn't deal with the directness of them. It, um, um, whoa. And yet everything was wrong, really, with the ball, without the ball. I didn't recognise the team, um, and so... We'll get back to basics, everybody, in tomorrow. We'll all be watching that again and we'll talk through it and we'll try and put it right. So we, we wouldn't have deserved anything at the end of the day. It wasn't good enough for start to finish. and um, we. Um, it's, an, it's, it's, it's probably one of the first big tests since I've been here, really. Of let's let's see if we can put it right and let's see if this group of players is, uh, is willing to get back to basics and do what we're good at and, um, and let's see if we can do that at the weekend.
Yeah, listen, you, you've said it. I can't defend it. There it is. It's been black and white. It's um, um, yeah. Listen, and there's, there's been no real reason for it, to be honest. It's um, you know, if it, it's we have to find. I have to find the answers, um, and that's the plan. And as I say, we'll we'll uh, we'll have a. We'll all be in in the morning. We'll all be watching that back. We'll be talking it through. We'll be seeing what we what what has happened. Why did this? Why do you do that? Why did you do this? Why are you doing that? And um, let's let's try and break it down bit by bit, as you have to when things don't go as well as you'd have planned. Um, and yeah, that is, let's be careful. We don't um, go overboard. You know, it's it's this is the championship. We come out of League One. We've so we've lost back to back away games. Um, okay, but um, you know we've just played against a club who've lost. Eight games out of nine on the road. It's you know it's not easy league, for, for, especially if you've just come out of out of League One. You, it takes time to adapt, and yet the, the frustration is that we've done pretty well on the road this year, and um, and yet the last two performances have been way way below the standard that we've set. All to be honest, I didn't I didn't see it. Listen, I, I think they set their stall out pretty early on, didn't they? And um, not, not a pun, you know, left their mark really. It um, we needed to stand up to. That's why there was some. Angry stuff going on in the dressing room at half time. It uh, we have to. This is what our team is built on. This is what we are talk about: their spirit, their togetherness, their camaraderie. And when you're in a fight, you have to stand up with your mate and start swinging. And um, uh, that was a bit lacking today, I think. That's pretty much all I've got for you today, folks. If you've enjoyed this video, please give it a good old thumbs up. And if you're new to the channel, make sure you hit the old subscribe button to keep your bang up to date. With all things Blackburn Rovers related, Championship related, World Football related, and we got it all here under one roof. Also, check out the old description links to my other social media platforms are in there. <laughs> Twitter, Facebook, and the old WordPress. It's all in there, so you can keep up with me on the go. Uh, so the next time you'll see me, we'll be right back here tomorrow. Or, you know, a little bit later, sometime on Thursday, when we'll preview the old Sheffield Wednesday game. The games do come thick and fast. They do kind of slow down a little bit after Saturday. Uh, and that's something I think we, we're all looking forward to. Just a little bit of a respite before the madness of the back end of December kicks in, where the games against West Brom, Norwich, uh, whoever else we're playing, I think Leeds are in there and all that. It's, it's, it's going to get crazy, but for the time being... We don't need it to be crazy. We need to get it sorted. We need to get all this mess sorted out, get a win, uh, a comfortable one as well, and maybe just maybe we can we can get them back on track. Because right now, Rovers are a mess, and they need to be sorted out. January transfer window is around the corner. I'm going to do a buy, keep, or sell transfer window special video uh, as we get closer to the start of that window, and that will be on the channel uh, in the next couple of days, week or so. Until then, I'm going to get out of here. Thumbs up, subscribe. Ciao for now. Thanks again for watching. Please like, share, and most importantly, hit the subscribe button to keep you bang up to date with all things Blackburn Rovers related, championship related, football related. We've got it all covered right under one roof. And while I still have you, please be sure to check out some of the old videos scattered along here. I hope.